Kid Dynamite. He's got his work cut out with Mike Tyson. Oh, the right hand! The baddest man on the planet. Anywhere else, he's in danger. Oh, there it is, right hand! Iron Mike. Thinks has ever been down in a professional fight. And he's down again and in serious trouble. These are just some of the nicknames that turned the boxing world upside down late in the 20th century. Marvis must move or we're going to be out of here very, very quickly. Uppercut and Marvis is hurt. Razor is down. Mike Tyson was a beast. There's no denying that. But did you know that there was this one man who really maximized Tyson's potential and made him the wealthiest athlete at some point in his career? I want to have a perfect fight. I want to be the best fighter. Being phenomenal inside the boxing ring is one thing, but the boxing industry is a business, and Mike Tyson was the product. And this man, the legendary promoter Don King, advertised Mike Tyson like nobody else. Tyson literally made millions of dollars. If Don King helped Tyson secure his bag, why did he end up being hailed as the most evil man in boxing? And what did Don King do that made Tyson so angry that he wanted to knock him out? I ain't doing you scumbag. You. In the early 1980s, Don King had already established himself as a flamboyant and legendary promoter, promoting one of the biggest names in boxing, Muhammad Ali. Don King made Ali a superstar and a global sensation. One day in a gym in the busy streets of Brooklyn, Don King had the chance to create one more superstar, and he grasped it and never let go. In the dynamic world of professional boxing, some alliances have the power to shape history. Don King, at that time, was constantly on the lookout for the next big thing in boxing. He had a knack for spotting raw talent and transforming it into global stardom. This is the high road. I'm not mad at anybody. I have no extra grind with anyone. All I want to do is to present to America and the world the best in boxing in a camaraderie, conviviality type of setting. When rumors of a formidable young fighter reached his ears, King's interest was piqued, and he ventured into that Brooklyn gym. As Don King entered the gym, he quickly noticed one man throwing punches with thunderous intensity. Don King was immediately captivated by this young fighter's raw power and tenacity. Don King approached a young man by the name of Mike Tyson. King sensed an opportunity to mold Tyson into a boxing phenomenon. Don King, exuding charisma and passion, introduced himself to the young Tyson. He spoke of grand dreams, of making him the heavyweight champion of the world. Initially skeptical, Tyson listened to King's vision, recognizing the potential of joining forces with a seasoned promoter who had already elevated countless fighters to superstardom. Tyson, though somewhat skeptical, saw an opportunity for growth and a chance to fulfill his dreams under Don King's guidance. He took a leap of faith, choosing to trust King's expertise and unmatched promotional abilities. It was a pivotal moment as the paths of these two boxing icons converged, setting the stage for an extraordinary partnership. Since then, the boxing world has flipped upside down. With Tyson's incredible boxing skills and King's unmatched promotional flair, the duo embarked on a journey that would captivate the world. Under King's guidance, Tyson's rise to stardom was meteoric. Fight after fight, he delivered devastating knockouts, captivating audiences, and capturing world titles in the process. King's larger-than-life persona perfectly complemented Tyson's ferocity, creating an unstoppable force in the ring. Night after night, Tyson had proven that he is the best heavyweight boxer in the world, and King helped him spread the word. Don King booked mega fights that made Tyson look invincible, and his fights became a spectacle for all boxing fans. That was a right to the body and an uppercut to the head, and Burbick is down. This one is going to be over, I believe. It's over. That's all. At the age of just 20 years old, Mike Tyson claimed his first ever heavyweight title, becoming the youngest boxer ever to win a heavyweight title, a feat that still stands up to this day. For three straight years, Tyson reigned supreme, with King in his corner, selling his fights and making him a global superstar. In 1990, Mike Tyson became the wealthiest athlete in the world, overtaking global basketball sensation Michael Jordan. 
However, despite all of Mike Tyson's success, his relationship with Don King started to have its challenges when Tyson's personal and legal troubles became a constant backdrop to their success. His tumultuous relationships, legal battles, and notorious outbursts outside the ring often overshadowed his boxing achievements. But through it all, Don King stood by Tyson's side, becoming his staunch advocate and defender. Give him his constitutional right. Mike Tyson is now synonymous to due process. The Constitution of this great United States. We're not arguing whether he's guilty or innocent. We're saying that due process take his court. King's unwavering support and belief in Tyson became a pillar of strength during some of the darkest moments in the fighter's life. The bond between Don King and Mike Tyson faced its most significant test when Tyson was convicted and sentenced to prison in 1992 for rape charges. Even though there was a change of champion this year in boxing, the biggest story by far did not take place in the ring. It took place in a courthouse in downtown Indianapolis where the former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson lost the biggest fight of his life to a 108-pound opponent. Absolutely no thoughts about Tyson. He's a common criminal who's getting what he deserves. He's a rapist. He belongs in jail. It was a devastating blow for both men, and many believed it marked the end of Tyson's career. However, King remained loyal to Tyson, visiting him in prison and continuing to support him throughout his sentence. This unwavering dedication not only showcased their bond, but also helped reshape the public's perception of Tyson. Upon Tyson's release from prison in 1995, Don King played a pivotal role in rebuilding his career and reputation. Together, they orchestrated Tyson's comeback, with King skillfully promoting his fights and strategically positioning him to regain his status as one of the sport's most feared and respected athletes. Introducing the one, the only, Mike Tyson! Tyson's return to the ring was marked by a series of victories, each accompanied by King's elated presence ringside. After all Tyson and Don King went through, you would think that Don King was the perfect promoter for Mike, right? I guess you haven't seen Don King's dark side yet. Just three years after Tyson's release from prison, he and Don King had a massive fallout as he sued Don King, going as far as calling Don King greedy. But how did they end up like this? Don King has a history of rifts with his fighters, especially with the legendary Muhammad Ali. Don King ingratiates himself with fighters by appealing to their worst angels instead of their better angels and allowing them to do what they please uh, and in that way to, to gain their loyalty. In 1982, just years after he met Mike Tyson, he was sued by Ali for underpaying him $1.1 million for a super fight with Larry Holmes. There was also this story that Don King called an old friend of Ali, Jeremiah Shabazz, and gave him a suitcase containing just $50,000 in cash and letter ending Ali's lawsuit against him. By that time, Ali was ailing and desperate for money. He accepted the cash and signed the letter, ending the lawsuit against King. The Hall of Famer Larry Holmes also sued King, claiming that King cheated him out of $10 million. Don gets sued a lot, yet there is some settlement agreement, and then they go on and continue to do business, because ultimately the fighter has to fight to make money. So they're really the victims. Don King was known to underpay his fighters, and with Mike Tyson, it was no different. You've got to give it to him. He's probably the only one who has the balls to undercut the legendary Mike Tyson. He did make some moves about closing off bank accounts so that the women could not uh, put checks against him, which were in Mike's interest. But they weren't being done for Mike, they were being done for Don King to cement his association with him. This lawsuit is brought by Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson sued King in 1998, describing his former promoter as ruthless, deplorable, and greedy. He sued King for $100 million and alleged that King stole millions from him for more than a decade. Mike Tyson himself, over the years, has said he knew that people were robbing him. And if you knew Mike Tyson back then, he was not just going to let that one go. Rather than waiting for a decision on the court, 
Mike Tyson decided to fix it his way, the Tyson way. One time, when he and King were in the car, Tyson just snapped. They were just driving, and the next thing Tyson knew, he freaked out and kicked the hell out of Don King. He kicked Don King at the back of his head, and when the car stopped, he jumped on King and beat him ruthlessly. Don King miraculously escaped the vicious hands of Tyson and ran off the street. Tyson tried to catch Don King, but one of his security guards came, just looking at what was happening in the car. What did Tyson do? He punched King's security guard so hard that he was knocked out cold. Tyson was out of control, and the next second, a police officer came to check on what was happening. The funny thing was that Tyson revealed that he had cocaine and marijuana in the car, but the police officer did not bat an eye and drove them to the nearest hotel. Lucky break for Tyson, escaping yet another time in jail. Years later, the dispute was settled in court, with Tyson receiving $14 million from King. As Tyson reminisced on the incident, with Tyson being more mellow than he was before, he apologized for what he did to Don King. I, I called Don the other day just to say I apologize. You did? Wow. Yeah. What? He stated that Don King was messing with his money he worked hard to earn. In the end, he loved Don King and treated him as family, and sometimes disputes happen. Tyson and Don King's relationship was indeed a roller coaster. But if there was one lesson that Don King learned, it was to never mess again with Mike.